Here's my plan of creating a custom enclosure for my eGPU setup. So if you haven't seen it already, I'm on the eGPU journey to create the best eGPU I can for the Ally X. And I've already done a previous video, so make sure you watch that. It's like a prequel video of like what I've already been through, why I got rid of my other eGPU because it had a problem and stuff, and now I'm building my own. So what I've got now is a Corsair 750E PSU. I've got an RTX 4070, the MSI Ventus 20C, and I've also got the ADT Link UT3G controller, which is a, a USB 4, which will basically give the best performance with the lowest amount of bottleneck from my 4070 GPU to my Ally X for the, for the best experience, basically. The downside with this setup is there's no enclosures for it. So you've either got to go down the route of fabricating one yourself or designing a 3D print yourself and doing that. Now, I don't have a 3D printer and nor do I have any 3D modeling skills. So yeah, I could probably pay someone to make this, but I thought, no, I'm, I'm gonna go down a different route and just see if I can do this the easy way, which maybe you could potentially do of just buying parts and seeing if I can jank them together. Because for me, I don't like the idea of having the dead Robocop is what I term it, of just having cables and mess everywhere. I'm trying to build this to create the best TV docked experience. So I can take my Ally X just here, literally sit it down next to my TV, plug in a cable and then throw the 4070 power onto my TV, right? So my thought here is I wonder if I can get like a, a mini ITX or like a micro ATX PC case, a chassis, and then like build it into that. So here's what I've ordered. So I've done a lot of digging around and what I've decided on and I've bought is a Mini Geek Mini Neo G200, which is a mini ITX case with a vented side panel instead of glass because it's so small, I wanna get as much ventilation in there as possible, right? Now this is tiny. The whole thing is basically mesh all over. And one of the big things that I wanted was the handle on top. I wanna make this a portable system. If I wanna bring it up here to the studio, then I can. If not, if I wanna move it somewhere else, then I can with a handle. But obviously that wasn't necessary. I just like the idea of being able to like make it portable. Now the other reason I settled on this specific case is it actually supports full size ATX power supplies, which is what I've got pretty much. I mean, the 750E from uh, Corsair is slightly shorter or like not as wide, but it is still classed as an ATX power supply. Yes, you can get SFX and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't. I wanted to go like the, the more affordable route, like get the best I could, right? So I've got the 750E and I'm hoping it's gonna fit in here because this already has the ATX bracket to support it at the front of the case. Hopefully I can mount the ADT Link UT3G at the bottom somewhere and have the graphics card towards the base of the case. But I wanted to utilize as well extra fans. I wanted to have better airflow because I'm pretty sure the GPU at the bottom is gonna be pretty tight to the floor of the case, which also has mesh. So it's still gonna get good airflow, but I wanted to add some extra fans. And so we're gonna go with some low profile fans, some super low profiles. And again, all of this is just from Amazon, stuff that was very easily accessible to any of you and me because I just literally wanted to go click buy have it here the next day and try and build it together right so the case supports 120 millimeter fans but they've got to be 15 millimeters like deep right so they've got to be very small fans so what I found was thermal right TLC 120 15 and these have got really good ratings on Amazon here and they're really affordable they're like six pound fifty per fan so I'm gonna buy three of these and see if I can jank them together into this build, if possible. But here comes the downside, because the ADT Link UT3G doesn't have any fan inputs. It doesn't have anything. All it has is a USB-C out, which is going to go straight to this. So how am I gonna power the fans? Well, I'm gonna go old school and get a Molex adapter. So Molex to the fan direct from the power supply. So yes, they are going to be on, all of the time. So this could be a noisy situation, it might be, but I'm willing to trade that off because I'm gonna be having this set up on a TV with a big sound bar, and I'm pretty sure the general volume that I'm gonna be playing at is going to like drown out the noise of the eGPU enclosure with three fans running at full speed. And obviously to combat that, 
I made sure that these fans are lower RPM. So they're, they're 1500 RPM fans. So I'm hoping that they're not going to spin up like two and a half thousand or whatever and be really noisy. So 1500 RPM is not too bad. Not sure what the sound is that they give out. It probably tells you somewhere on the page, but I didn't really look at that. I just went, yeah, they're right. They're cheap. Let's give it a go. And as for the Molex to fan adapter, again, this is just some random thing on Amazon. But yeah, they were just cheap. It was like eight quid for a pack of them or something. And I was like, well, let's give it a go. And obviously I made sure at first that I checked my Corsair 750E power supply case, you know, for all the cables to make sure it even had a Molex. I don't even think they call them Molex these days. I'm probably showing my age. So they're the three main components of this build that I'm going to be using. Now, I've got a feeling that because the GPU is going to sit really close to the floor, there's not going to be much airflow because the feet of the case look very, very short. So I'm probably going to have to buy some aftermarket feet to raise it up, create more airflow between the whatever I'm sitting the eGPU on and the bottom of the case to give as much airflow as possible to the GPU. But we'll see when I go through the build video, which will be the next video after this. You know, hopefully I've completed it. And if I haven't, I'll tell you why in that video. <laughs> but there's still one thing we haven't covered yet. I've told you that the UT3G doesn't have any extra USBs. It doesn't have anything. It's just going to be straight into here. So we need to utilize the second USB-C port for power, but also extra IO. What I'm going to do is use a JSOX dock, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I can take this dock and stick it inside the case because this case, like I said, is meant to fit a motherboard in there and a CPU cooler as well, but I'm not using that. So I'm hoping there's gonna be space somewhere in there that I can then mount this dock inside it and then just route the cables out of the back where the motherboard IO would be because there's gonna be a big hole in the back of the case where that would typically be. And hopefully I can just stick cables in through there, but I'm a bit skeptical because it's quite a big dock and I'm not too sure if it's actually going to fit once I've got the power supply in there, you know, the 24 pin cable and everything connected. I don't know. So I will tackle that and let you know of my experiences. But that's it. That's my update here. This is what I'm going to try and create with readily available parts. No modding, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. I might have to drill some extra holes in the case and stuff to mount things. I don't know. I'm hoping that's not the case. I want to make this very easy so that anyone could do this, right? No 3D printing, no fabricating. I just want to buy stuff off the shelf and just stick it together and see if it works. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that that is the case. All the links are going to be down in the, in the description below if you want to try this out for yourself. But I would say hold off and wait for my next video where hopefully I've completed it and I'll tell you everything that went wrong <laughs> or everything that went right. I don't, who knows? But yeah, this is the, the like part two of my eGPU video. Make sure you subscribe. Watch the first like section if you've not seen it. I'll have it linked over here. Make sure you go down there, subscribe, like this video. Let me know all your thoughts. If you've created your own setup, well, I want to know everything that you're doing with your eGPU right now. And of course, become a member and you help support the channel. You get to talk to me and AJ in our private Discord and talk of AJ you can check out our podcast yeah our podcast over there I don't know what I'm talking about see you later bye <laughs>